Okay, so welcome back. This is now my first video of my AS level series. I'll be doing AS and A2 questions. I teach um, A2, RGs, AS at school. And um, <clears throat> as I do answer questions that have been asked by my students, I will be recording them and I'll be uploading them on YouTube on my channel, primarily because I start getting fed up of answering the same questions again and again and again as students ask them. So it's primarily for my own students that when they ask me a question and I say, okay, it's already, I send them a link, it's already up uploaded. And secondly, you know, to help other students out there who might benefit from my work as well. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll be starting doing this as the IGs have now finished. For June 2018, the IGCSE. Now, my A level course that I teach at school is Edexcel, IAL. Um, this year for the A2, we're also doing the old legacy one, the um, Edexcel GCE as well. So, some students are doing that and some students are doing the IAL. But the I, um, AS students are all doing IAL, C1, 2. And then um, in AS, they do Mechanics M1. And in A2, they do S1. So, those are the things that I'll be you know, adding to my YouTube channel during the next few weeks or so, just answering questions as they come up to me from students. Um, so now, first of all, uh, my first request was question number seven from C12 January 2008 um, IAL paper. And it's a question about the applications of differentiation. Now here it tells us that figure one shows a rectangular sheet of negligible mass or negligible, sorry, thickness. Okay, so it's a rectangular sheet of negligible thickness, which measures 25 by 15, 25 centimeters by 15. Those are the dimensions of the of the sheet. Squares of side x centimeters are cut from each corner, and the remainder is folded along the dotted lines to make an open cuboid box, as shown in Figure 2. We've got to show that the volume of the box is given by this particular um, formula. All right. So now, what we need to do here is um, we need to basically think about the volume of this box is made up of the length times the width times the height. Okay. The volume of um, the volume of a cuboid is given by the length times the width times the height. Okay. So here we have. The length and the width and the height. Okay, so we're going to think about those dimensions here. Now, the length of the cuboid is equivalent to the length from this point to that point. Okay, because these corners are cut off. These are all these are corners all cut off here. They're missing. They've been cut off. And they're now waste material. Okay. Now. It's been folded along these dotted lines. So the width, this width of this box is now made up of this 25, but taking away these two lengths, which are both x. So the, the, the length of the box is 25 minus 2x. Okay, because two of those x, two of those lengths have been taken away. And the width of the box, similarly, it's like this 15 minus these two x's. So the width of the box is 15 minus 2x. I'll just put it in here. And the height of the box is basically that height, which is just x. So it says, show that the volume of the box is given by this formula. So basically, to find the volume of the box, you multiply x times 25 minus 2x times 15 minus 2x. And when we multiply this out, hopefully, we'll get this particular expression. So we're going to, I'll multiply the main brackets first. So I have 25 times 15. Okay. Um, 25 times 15. Let's just get me trusted calculator out. There we go. Still got some time left on my free trial. Okay. So you've got 25 times 15. 25 times 15. 
that gives you 375. Okay, so you've got 375, which looks quite nice because you've got something like that there. Then you've got 25 times minus 2x, which is minus 50x. And you've got minus 2x times 15x, which is minus 30x. And you've got minus 2x times minus 2x, which is plus 4x squared. Okay? So now you've got the volume is equal to, now, this is going to be x times 375 minus 80x plus 4x squared. And if you multiply that out, I'll multiply it this way because I want to have the x cubed first. x times 4x squared is 4x cubed. And x times minus 80x is minus 80 x squared and x times 375 is plus 375 x so it's exactly as we're supposed to have it okay so that's a pretty simple um, you know question and just have to just just imagine what that looks like when it's been put together okay when these corners are cut out and just look at the dimensions that you got in terms of x and multiply them together okay so now I'm going to go on to part B. I'll do it straight away. It's not in a separate video. Um, part B says, use calculus to find the value of x to three significant figures for which the volume of the box is a maximum. Now, to find the maximum and minimum okay, of any type of um, you know, expression like this, equation like this, okay, a formula like this, what we need to do is uh, we need to find where the, what's called the turning points are. Okay, the places where the gradient of this particular curve will be zero. All right. So we, what we need to do is to find the gradient function. So a of dot v equals 4x cubed minus 80x squared plus 375x. We need to find, okay, the turning point. Okay, we we need to find where the gradient function for this is equal to zero because that's where the, the curve is going to turn and you have either maximum or minimum. So what we need to do is, we need to find the gradient function, which is, in this case, dv dx. Okay, dv dx, we've got to differentiate this expression with respect to x. Now, differentiation, as most of you should know, um, is when you basically, uh, we use, we're going to use the pattern to do it from first principles. And to differentiate, you have to basically just multiply the power by the coefficient. So it's 3 times 4, which is 12. And then you take 1 away from the power. Same thing happens here. You have 2 times the minus 80, which is minus 160, and then x to the power of 1. So I have to write the 1 there. And then you've got 375 times x to the power of 1. So 1 times 375 is 375. Take 1 from the power. Well, you got that will give you x to the power of 0, which is 1. So whenever you have something which is like just an x to the power of 1 term, when you differentiate it, it just becomes the number, the coefficient. Okay? So there we have dv dx equals 12x squared minus 160x plus 375. Okay, I'll go into more detail about the basics of differentiation when we have a question, which that is a um, the main part. Okay, Now, that is the gradient function. We want to find when it's the maximum. You can say at the maximum, or at the minimum, in fact, the gradient function has to be equal to 0, because that's where the gradient is 0. So we have to equate this to 0. So you have 12x squared minus 160x plus 375 is equal to zero. Notice it says use calculus to find, because there's other ways to find it also. Okay, some of them are by um, you know sketching or graphing or whatever, but this is, they're asking us to use calculus, which means differentiating okay, in this particular case. So now I want to solve this equation. All right, to solve this equation, um, um, you can see that there's no a common factors here, 12, let's see, that's, that's actually there is, no, there's no common factor. So we've got to solve this equation, all right, and in order to do that, we can use a quadratic formula, we could attempt to factorize, okay, but um, factorizing will be a pretty uh, tall order here, so we could actually just try to use a quadratic formula if you wish, okay, to use a quadratic formula here, okay, you have x equals minus b, so it's 160 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 160 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 12, and times c, which is 375. Okay, all over 2a, 2 times 12. Okay, equals. Now, once you've done that, 
be showing you, you know how to do your factorizing. You could just go straight ahead into this particular mode, to be honest with you. Okay, so once you've written down, you know, the steps to show that you know how to use a formula, you don't have to show every single step after this. So I would advise, if you have one of these calculators, to just go to um, equation, okay, complex base matrix vector, actually table equation, which is number nine, and you want a poly polynomial equation, so press two, and you want degree two because it's quadratic. Okay, then you put the coefficient of x squared, which is 12, plus equals the coefficient of, of x, which is minus 160, that's your b, plus equals the, the constant, which is 375, and you press equals. Okay, and then you press equals again, and that will give you one solution, which is 10.299. 10.299 dot 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 and then you can get the other solution because there's only two solutions you press equals again and that gives you 3.03 .03, .03, so 3.034 so you have 3.03 .03, okay 4 all right so you get two solutions for this okay um, Okay, so now you got 10.299, and then it says justify that this value of x gives a maximum. Okay, so use calculus to find the value of x to two to three significant figures, for which the volume of the box is a maximum. Now, if you look at the actual context of the question, we found x is 10.299. Okay, and we found x is 3.0333. All right, now look at the width of the box. If x is equal to 10.299, then this is going to be 15 minus 20. It's going to be a negative value. So we're not going to accept this value, okay, because it causes one of the lengths to become negative. All right? So that's why, in this case, even though there are two positive answers, only one of them we're going to actually accept. Okay? So I'm going to say that the value of x, and it said to correct to what? To three significant figures. So th x is equal to 3.2. 0, 3 centimeters, and that's correct to three significant figures, okay? So why did we reject this? Because it makes one of the lengths, if we go back to the original diagram, it makes one of the lengths into a length which is negative, okay? Because you had 10 minus 2x, or 15 minus 2x, sorry. Okay, so 15 minus 2x will make this into a negative value, so we're only choosing the 3.034 value answer. Then part C says justify that this value of x gives a maximum value for v. Now, to, to justify that it does, there's different methods we could use, okay? But one of the easiest methods is to find the second differential, which is d squared v over d... Oops. One second, what have I done there? Let's just do this. Put it back in the center. Okay. D, v, d squared v over dx squared. That's called the second differential. Okay, so you're differentiating our differential. Okay, that was 12x squared minus 160x plus 375. So if you differentiate this again, you're going to get 2 times 12, which is 24. So it's 24x. Take one from the power. You got minus 160 times x to the power of 1, so it gives you minus 160 x to the power of 0, which means the x term goes. And when you differentiate a constant term, you get zero, because this is actually, if you think about it, it's 375 x to the power of zero. Zero times 375 is zero, and the whole thing disappears, okay? So this is the second differential. Now, if our value of x, okay, 3.034, if this makes this, okay, we substitute this into this, into this equation, okay? So you've got d squared v over dx squared equals 24 times 3.034, minus 160. Now, obviously, this is going to give us a negative value, because 24 times 3 is nowhere near 160. We can just make sure. So I've got 24 times my answer, and then subtract that 160 from that. Oops, what am I doing? Oh, no, sorry. Let's just... Uh, I, I, I took that answer... Uh, let me just, I forgot to go back to the original 
Okay, I have to go back to menu. I've got to go back to one, I think. Yeah, sorry. So, <clears throat> 24 times 3.03. Okay, 4, doesn't matter actually, equals, and minus 160. Okay, that gives you a negative value. Okay, so that gives you minus 87.14, 184, minus 87.184. Okay, so what we can say here is as the second differential is less than zero, therefore x equals 3.034 is a maximum. Okay, if the second differential, the value of x that we found, we substitute into the second differential and it gives you a number which is positive, then that value of x is for when this is a minimum. If it gives you a number which is negative, it's less than zero, then it's a maximum. Okay? So that's how we can justify that this gives us a maximum value. You have to show that the second differential is negative. Okay? Um, there's other ways of doing it. You could find, for example, you could substitute when x equals 3 and when x equals 3.5, for example, okay, into the, into the gradient function. This tells us what the gradient of the graph looks like. Okay? So if it's a maximum, that means the gradient was positive before and then it was uh, negative afterwards. Okay? So if you put the value of x equals 3 into this gradient function, it will give us a positive value. If you put x equals 3.5 or even 3.1 um, into this formula here, it's going to give you a negative value. That means uh, this 3.03 must be a turning point, okay? Because that's where the gradient is zero, okay? So just before it, the gradient is positive. Just after it, the gradient is negative. It gives us a, max it gives us a maximum. If it was like a negative first and then positive after that point, sorry, negative first and then positive after that point, then it would have been a minimum. Okay, so that's how you, that's another way of doing it, but most people find it much easier to just differentiate again and substitute that value in. If it's a positive value, it's a minimum. If it's a negative value, it's a maximum, as is the case here, and it says justify this as a maximum. Okay, now, find to three significant figures the maximum vol volume of this box. So we know that the volume of the box is given by the formula 4x cubed minus 80x squared plus 375x. Let me just copy that so I don't have to keep writing it down again. Copy. Go down here and paste it. Okay, so that's the volume of the box. Okay, and we got to basically show that it, it is to three symphony moves, we've got to find the volume, the maximum. So you're going to put x equals 3.034. Notice how I'm writing this down to one more significant figure than we need in our final answer. So we keep some accuracy. So the volume is going to be 4 times 3.034 cubed minus 80 times 3.034 squared plus 375 times 3.034. And if I just plug that all into my calculator, I will get the answers that we require. So 4 times 3.034 cubed. Yep. Uh, minus 80 times 3.034 squared. Just that much. Okay. 80 times 3.034 squared plus 375 times 3. 0, 3, 4, that's it, equals. So you have 513.051, 513.0, let me just make sure, 0, 051, okay, which is equal to 500 and, three significant figures, 13 centimeters cubed, which is our final answer, okay? And there we have question number seven from uh, January 2018, C12 answered. Thank you very much for paying attention and watching.